So um, in this video, um, we're going to look at the product sum sum to product formulas. Um, and, you know, again, um, they're, they're based on um, the uh, sine of alpha plus beta and rewriting that as both a sum and a difference. And so, um, and you can combine them. And it's something that we do use a little bit in Calc BC. Um, so, so it's good that we look at this. Um, now, um, I'm not going to make you memorize these formulas. We're just going to uh, be able to be familiar with them and recognize them. And what it does is it takes, it, it takes a summary difference and converts it to a product, or it could take a product and convert it to a sum or a difference. So, so it's like product sum, sum to product. It's like, so for example, um, if you have cosine 37.5 times cosine of 7.5, that's a product of two cosine functions and each of them not really um, a very nice values. Like, you know, um, in, in terms of uh, using uh, or solving this without a calculator. But if I think about, okay, well, if I have a product of these two, is there a, another way to represent this product? And so when I look up here, oh, it's cosine, cosine. So then I can say, okay, I can rewrite that as one half times cosine of alpha minus beta. So that would be 37.5 minus 7.5, which is 30, um, plus cosine of uh, alpha plus beta. So 37.5 plus 7.5, which is 45 degrees. So in this case, it kind of worked out nice because the sum and the difference actually gave us nice values. Um, cosine of 30 degrees, so that would be um, the square root of three over two. And then the cosine of 45 is root two over two. So then when we add that up, um, we would get root three plus root two over two and then times that two. So root three plus root two, uh, over two because it's a common denominator, or we can make that into root three plus root two over four. So um, that's one example to like if you've got a product of two, um, I guess, you know, expressions that each of them by themselves are not very nice, perhaps there's some indifference would help. Uh, and then you could expand that formula. Okay. Now, another one is, is sort of like this hypothetical, right? This, this, if this were true, which is not, but if this were true, find the value of this. So again, it's just kind of like an exercise to take a look and say, okay, well, here now I've got a product of sine and cosine. So if you look up to where it's the product of sine and cosine, it's one half sine of the sum. So, so we have one half and then it's sine of the sum. So 73 plus 13, which is 86. Oh, hmm. I wonder why we were given that, right? <laughs> um, and then you look at the rest of it plus sine of the difference. Plus sine of 73 minus 13 is 60. So that one, so that one's really kind of a nice value. So that equals sine 73 cosine of 13. And so then um, we based on the given, that's 99 one hundredths. And we know what sine of 60 is, it's root three over two. So we we have this fictional value, but that's okay. Um, plus root three over two. Um, and so then we can add them up. Um, you know, I would make that a common denominator of 50. Uh, oh, sorry, 100. So they multiply it by 50 over 50. So we get one half. And that's 99 over 100 plus um, 50 root 3 over 100. And then when you multiply by, by that 2, it's going to give us a common denominator of 200. So 99 plus 50 root 3 all divided by 200. So again, um, you know, I think in this section, I, I kind of highlighted the fictional part of it or the conditional part of it. Like if this were true, um, then what would happen? Okay, so then another example. Um, so now suppose, again, if the sum of this is equal to this value, then find cosine of 22. And so I want to think about, well, what was I given? I was given the sum of two angles, right? Sum of alpha plus sum of uh, sine of alpha plus sine of beta. So if I go back up here and look at that particular given, um, okay, here it is. So sine of sine of alpha plus sine of beta. So it's two times you average the angle and then you do cosine of the, I guess, reverse average. Um, so two sine of the average cosine of the difference divided by two. 
So I know that um, that would be two sine of, I could do 52 plus eight divided by two. And that's cosine of 52 minus eight over two. So that's what sine of 52 plus sine of eight equals. So it's like you're creating your own equation and then you put in the missing pieces. Well, they tell us what this expression, they're giving this to us to be square root of 33 sixths. Okay, uh, so then that's two sine of, well, 52 plus eight is 60 over two is 30. So that worked out nice. Uh, and then cosine, well, let's see, 52 minus eight is 44 divided by two is 22. Oh, okay. That's why they're asking us to find cosine of 22, because we can actually solve for, we can solve for this um, quantity. Um, so sine of 30 degrees is one half. So we get root 33 over six equals two times one half, and then times cosine of 22. And really the two and the one half cancel. So that actually worked out kind of crazy, right? Root 33 over six, is equal to cosine of 22, which is real nice. Okay, there's one more I wanna do in this video, um, and then I'm gonna do another video of explaining some of these practice problems in case you wanna see that, but it's number four here. It's this function that um, it says, you know, suppose your function four sine x, uh, Suppose you have a function four sine of x plus three cosine x. Um, can you rewrite that so it's just a sine function, right? And so, um, and the answer is yes, you can. And so here's what you need to do. You need to pick obviously the a and the theta to make that equivalent, but let's expand that because we have our formula, right? We know there's a sine of alpha plus beta formula out there. Right? We, we're having a quiz on it. Um, and so we know that sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. So we know we can expand that. Just choose x and theta as your angles. So um, my function f of x is equal to some a that I don't know, but then I could say, okay, that's sine of x cosine theta plus, and then if I would have distributed the a, sine of theta cosine x. And I know that that's equal to four sine x plus three cosine x. So four sine x plus three cosine x. So that equals a sine x cosine theta plus a sine theta cosine x. And here's what I want you to uh, notice. the um, like It's kind of like when we did partial fractions, like you can't create or um, get rid of any uh, quantities or, or variables, like the left has to balance the right. So if I have sine x's, then anything that has a sine x in it would have to be equivalent. In other words, that four sine x has to equal a sine x cosine of theta. And, and it's similarly, uh, the three cosine x has to be equal to the expression that has cosine x. So if I could line them up, I can break this down really into two equations. I can break down the equations that have cosine in them, and then I can break down the equations that have uh, sine in them. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So, so let's do the sine one first. So based on the sine one, I know that four sine of x has to equal a sine of x cosine of theta. And so sine of x sort of is like, like the uh, unifying factor. So since it's the same on both, we can, we can then count and say, okay, well, that means four has to equal a cosine of theta. And if you divide the a over here, cosine of theta equals four over a. And I should have mentioned it in the problem, I think I forgot to write this, that we know that a is strictly positive, okay? So four over a is equal to cosine of theta. Now, let's go ahead and do the same thing for this equation. We know that three cosine of x must equal um, a sine theta cosine of x. And again, since they're both cosine x here, that, that that's the unifying factor, we, we can rewrite that to say, well, three is equal to a sine of theta, divide that over, so sine of theta equals three over a. So now we have two pieces of information about our theta. 
we know the cosine of theta is 4 over a, and the sine of theta is 3 over a. So think about drawing that theta. So here's a here's your theta. And if since we knew a was positive, I should have given that to you. But since we know it's positive, we know it's in the first quadrant because that's where both cosine and sine are positive. Okay, so draw me a ratio 4 to a for cosine, 4 to a. Draw me a ratio of that sine that's 3 to a, opposite 3 to a. Well, that's <laughs> that's my favorite triangle, right? Uh, a has to be 5 to, to make that Pythagorean theorem work. So I know a is 5. And um, it's not the nicest of angles, but we also know what theta is. Um, theta it could be represented as the inverse tangent or arc tangent of three fourths. Um, it could be inverse sine of four fifths. Sorry, not four fifths, three fifths. It could be inverse cosine of four fifths. Like there's a lot of ways to name this angle. Uh, any six of the inverse trig functions would work. What you have to be careful is if your triangle was drawn in another quadrant, let's say quadrant two or three or four, then you need to make sure you choose an appropriate inverse tangent that is defined in that particular quadrant. So um, kind of a cool little problem, how you can use the expansion of sine of alpha plus beta, or I guess I could also do cosine of alpha plus beta. Um, depending what the given is, uh, and then line up the variables um, and make a system of equations. So it's very much like partial fractions. There's some familiarity to that. So, okay. Um, then the um, all of the rest of the problems on this page are, are great practice problems. So I'm going to create a second video that just walks through each of the solutions in case you want to see that, you know, and, and go through it. Or you could just solve it and check it, you know, check all the solutions too, either way. Okay. Very good.